Welcome back, everyone, and we've got a couple here to end the day with. Uh, we're going to go back and take a little walk down memory lane first. Representative Jerry Nadler, in his own words, on in 1998, on the release of Kenneth Starr report on Bill Clinton. Now, first of all, uh, Mr. Nadler does look like he's lost quite a bit of weight since 1998, but uh, still doesn't look healthy. Uh, but that's another that's something for another time. Uh, we have an interview here between Nadler and Charlie Rose. Rose, New York City and Democrat on the uh, New York City and a Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman Nadler, thank you for joining us, Representative. It's a pleasure. Tell me where we about this day. Uh, tell me where we about this day and a sense of what it was like to be in the House and the anticipation of this arriving and where we go from here. Well. We were just, the House was just reassembling today. We haven't been in session for a month, so people were just arriving. I just got here mid-afternoon and have, after having a series of meetings in New York. But we did get the report, which is now in the hands of the Sergeant-at-Arms under, un, under Armed Guard. It's 36 boxes. We're told it's two copies, so it means it's 18 boxes per copy. There is, I gather, a 400- or 500-page uh, report, and the balance is appendices and supporting materials. Now, Mr. Starr, in his transmittal letter to the Speaker and the Minority Leader, made it clear that much of this material is Federal Rule 6 material. That is, material that, by law, unless contravened by a vote of the House, must be kept secret. It's grand jury material. It represents statements which may or may not be true by various witnesses, salacious material, all kinds of material that it would be unfair to release. So I assume what's going to have to happen before anything else happens is that somebody the staff of the Judici Judiciary Committee, perhaps the chairman and a ranking minority member, is going to have to go over this material, at least the four, five hundred or 500 pages in the report, to determine what is fit for release and what is, as a matter of decency and protecting people's privacy rights, people who may be totally innocent third parties, what must not be released at all. Now, the House Rules Committee will be meeting overnight, and I presume that we will vote tomorrow, probably on a recommended rule as to how to handle the report. This is very telling. Because Representative Jerry Nadler is one of the many people demanding that the full unredacted Mueller report just be released. He's going to subpoena this report uh, without a rule change, without a House vote. So 21 years ago, when Kenneth Starr released his report on uh, President William Jefferson Clinton, we have to abide by the rules, and this is the law. We have to protect people's privacy rights. They may be totally innocent third party. But now that this is a Republican president who was investigated for collusion and there's no evidence of that, we need to see it all, see it all, see it all. Just do it, just do it, just do it. More proof that the entirety of the DNC is the party of just obey me all the time, no question, or you will be utterly destroyed. And it's very sad because, honestly, this is something that needs to change about how our government works. Sorry about that. Needed to disable something. But Jerry Nadler is very quick in 1998 to remind the entire country that this is Federal Rule 6C material. It may be grand jury material. It may be salacious. It may be unrelated. So we can't just release everything. There would have to be a rules change. There has to be a vote by the House. But now that it is Attorney General William Barr, saying the very same thing about the Bob Mueller report, none of that matters. He's just required to remove, to remove all redactions and release everything to a body that we know has leaked like a sieve for years. Uh, in the most concise way I know how to say, Jerry Nadler is a hypocrite. Bill Clinton was to be protected at all costs. Donald Trump is to be removed from office at all costs, whether those be legal or not. But that's not the only one we have for tonight. Adam shifting. Trump is unpatriotic. Doesn't matter if he's innocent. Back in March, Adam Schiff said that he had more than ample evidence showing collusion with Russia. He also has sustained that impeachment is not the end game. I think the Speaker has made very clear that in the absence of compelling evidence that there isn't going to be an impeachment. Meanwhile, Schiff's committee has continued to further probe Trump and investigate after special counsel Robert Mueller's report was delivered to Attorney General William Barr on Friday. 
Today, when Attorney General published the Mueller report, Schiff said, whether these acts are criminal or not, whether the obstruction of justice was criminal or not, well, if it's not criminal, then it's not obstruction. Or whether these contacts were sufficiently illicit, they are unquestionably dishonest, unethical, immoral, and unpatriotic. Can anyone understand what Adam Schiff wants? Very simply, I can tell you what he's saying. I don't care if it was a crime or not. I call it a crime, so just give me what I want. Similar to the Nadler story we just looked at. 21 years ago, when it was Bill Clinton, we have to observe the letter of the law. We have to make sure that the House votes to change the rules. Now, because it's Donald Trump in office and it's A.G. Barr, we have to just uh, ignore the rules. We have to just do whatever the DNC says to do. And, of course, we have Schiff here backing him up as any good pencil neck goon will. He is out all over the press junket, repeating that it doesn't matter if he did it. It doesn't matter if it was a crime. We say it's wrong, so just impeach already, damn it. I've said for a, a long while, I'm expecting in my lifetime to hear a Democrat say, I don't care what the law is. You will obey me or I will have you killed. We have a party full of, I am your God, you bigot, obey me level morons. They walk around and ignore their own people inciting violence against Americans who disagree politically. And then they turn around and say that the president telling the country that I didn't do this, I am innocent, it never happened, that's obstruction of justice. I would love to ask Adam Schiff, so is telling people that you're innocent obstruction? Is someone under investigation required to either not speak to anyone at all, or are they required to confess whether they did it or not? Because that's exactly what Shifty here has said. We found no evidence of obstruction. We found no evidence of collusion. Yet Schiff here continues to maintain there is ample evidence in plain sight. Although he also says that it doesn't matter if it was criminal or not, it's still wrong. Something like it's not, it may not be criminal to hurl accusation after accusation after accusation at the president in a bid to overthrow the government, but it is wrong. It's not criminal to say all this unless you act on it. Donald Trump may have said he wanted the investigation to end. He may have said he wanted to fire Miller or Rosenstein. He may have said he wanted people to not testify, or he did not want to provide documents, but none of that was acted on. Schiff saying that it is still wrong would be the same as saying that someone who is stopped for speeding declining to allow their car to be searched, well, that's evidence of a crime right there. No, it is someone who knows they have, their, they have rights. President Donald Trump enjoys the First Amendment just as you or I do. And he is speaking to the American people who elected him and now overwhelmingly support him because his uh, approval rating is quite a bit higher than Barack Obama's was at this time in 2009. Or 2010. Sorry, he's well over. He's well on his way to 60 percent, and the Democrats are running scared. They have to fire their base up and just continue the. But he's he's illegitimate. He colluded. He colluded. He colluded. There's no evidence, but he did it. No evidence, but he did it. And this is going to end up being along with give up your guns, give up your your religion, and don't speak ill of us will be their entire platform for 2020. We're going to hear Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren and the others, the other women, just harp on the fact that they will be a woman president. They will be a woman of color as president and that we need to not elect a white man. White men are the problem. We've already had Maisie Hirono actually tell men to shut up because, of course, Democrats are the party of, if you don't support me, you may not speak. So it probably won't be long until Adam Schiff calls it a crime to publicly disagree with him. And Shifty, I, I don't think you'll ever see this, but if you do, you're a disgrace to your office and to the state you supposedly represent. Because you are literally sitting in the House of Representatives doing nothing but obstructing the sitting president, something you happily accuse the GOP of any time that there's a Democrat wanting to do anything. But I've talked about these long enough. Let me know what you think 
in the comments, just remember to keep it civil. We do not learn from an argument. We only learn from a debate. As always, also remember to like and share this video, to comment, subscribe, and activate notifications so that you're among the first to know of all new content as it is posted. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day.